meeting, I'd like to call to order the City Council meeting of the City of Joliet for June 16, 2020, here in the City Hall Chambers. Mayor Bob Odekirk presiding. We will be giving an indication this evening by Honorable Councilman Pat Mudry, which after the invocation, he will lead us in the pledge to the flag. You should all stand, please. Fellow Council, Lord God, thank you for all you have given us. We still have many people working in the front lines with the COVID-19 virus pandemic. First responders and essential workers are still in our prayers. As we have those who have lost loved ones, or have someone seriously sick with the virus, we pray for you. God, I know you know a lot has transpired in these past couple of weeks. The tragic death of George Floyd, the civil unrest that followed with today's orderly Black Lives Matter rallies. We all hear voices of change. Help us find the way to make the correct modifications so we can all move forward as one. With your help, your guidance, and knowledge, we know we can find a new beginning. Amen. Amen. Pledge your allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll begin with roll call. Mayor Oderkirk? Here. Councilman Dickinson? Here. Councilwoman Gavin? Here. Councilman Hug? Here. Councilman Morris? Here. Councilman Mudrin? Here. Councilwoman Coleman? Here. Councilwoman Reardon? Here. Councilman Turk? Here. Let the record show that Councilwoman Gavin is attending remotely this evening. First on the agenda this evening, um, there are no appointments, so we'll move on under approval of agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as written with the following changes? Remove Council Memo 332-20, which is the application for a drive through permit for a Dunkin' restaurant at 800 North Rainer. And remove Council Memo 336-20 resolution denying a special use permit for used car sales facility located at 1900 Essington Road. Mayor. Yes. Uh, before we move the, uh, the one memo regarding Dunkin' Donuts, I did talk to uh, Derek today from Economic Development. And I'm asking before we move forward, I know they're going to do the traffic study, but I would also ask that they reach out to the neighbors on the north and the south and the east side. And, and I think maybe legislative should put something into effect. Even though there was a business there uh, prior to, it has been empty for quite some time. I feel that the people that are surrounding there should have a right to know what's going right next door to where they live and instead of being surprised and hearing it on the radio like I did. So, um, and then I got questions I didn't know how to answer them because it was the first I'd heard about it. So Derek did uh, apologize for that and he's going to look into that. So since we have time, um, I have asked him to do that for us. Okay, thank you. So is there a motion to approve the agenda as written with the removal of council memos 332-20 and 336-20? So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. 
Councilman Turk. Aye. Next on the agenda is citizens to be heard on agenda items. We did not receive any email comments, but we do have a few that registered to speak this evening. Okay. We have John on the line. John, this is Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. <clears throat> I have a couple of issues. First, thank you for removing the Dunkin' Donuts at Six Corner item from the agenda until a traffic study can be done. Also, Jan, Councilman Coleman, thank you for your comments about, I just heard about notifying the neighbors. Appreciate that, too. I like the idea of the owners paying for the study, but if you let them pick the business to do it, isn't that like putting a fox in charge of the hen house? I would like to see the city conduct the study and then charge the business owner. I'm really not familiar with that process, but it just seems more logical to do it that way. <clears throat> These are just my thoughts on that matter. Second issue is my favorite topic, the ballpark. Mr. Mudron, you are correct. The resolution before you tonight was not presented or discussed at the stated committee meeting. That discussion was to wipe out the $75,000 rent and pay the utilities. City Hall is turning into a magic show. Disappearing personnel folders, appointments magically appearing minutes before the start of a council meeting, and now resolutions being submitted by the stating committee meeting. It was never discussed. The prorated stuff was brought up by the owner at the pre-council meeting. And interesting enough, Councilman Hugg said he made the recommendation to the owners to suggest it to the city council. This is the same councilman hug that made the following statement about the slammer's lease. Quote, we have a lease that we were informed in executive session is the worst lease in the league, Hug declared before making his vote. Doesn't come close to any of the other teams. There's some teams that are at $250,000 to $350,000 in guaranteed revenue. We continue to stand to lose money. The numbers were down this year over last year. We stand to continue to lose 200,000 a year, approaching 300,000 to 400,000, depending on how bad the repairs are each year. We need more guaranteed revenue as a city to move this forward. I'm not really happy. This is not a healthy lease for the city. I vote no. As I said in my email, I happen to agree with Councilman Huck's statement about the lease. They received a sweetheart deal from the city of Joliet, and now they have the goal to come back and ask the city to discount the $75,000 and to pay a prorated fee. To that I say, go pound sand. Mr. Jones, you were asked by Councilman last night if the city was going to get the naming rights money that is in the naming rights contract. You did not give a yes or no answer. You rattled off some words and did not answer the question. The council should be demanding an answer to that question. It's your fiduciary responsibility. There are hundreds of businesses in Joliet that could use $75,000 for their failing businesses. These are legit businesses that were making a profit before the coronavirus hit. Unlike the ballpark, who hasn't made a profit since they opened in 18 years ago. I respectfully ask that the City Council vote no on a resolution to prorate the rent. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Robert. Robert, this is Mayor Odekirk. You give your name, address, and make your comment, please. Yes, this is Robert Hernandez, 809 Westminster Road. And I'm appalled at your previous speaker, John Sheridan, and I'm appalled at Councilwoman Quillman, and I'm telling you to your face, Councilwoman Quillman, that structure over at Six Corners, that, that donut shop, that's a no-brainer. You don't need a damn study for that, for that. You had a liquor store at that corner. You had a burrito place at that corner for years and years and years, and there were no traffic problems. Now, you're asking the city council and city staff have taken into consideration the neighbor's concerns, and you didn't give a damn about the neighbor's concerns when that gas station went through 
on, on Collins Street, which is the only gas station that will serve liquor in the whole state of Illinois. Because you don't care about the Hispanic community. I'm going to put it right out front to you. And you will not receive the support of the Hispanic community because we're tired of Jan Quillman constantly ignoring the concerns of the Hispanic community. Not once did you step forward to say that we need to hear from the residents of that area before we approve this liquor license. You did it and you did not care. John Sheridan supported it. He doesn't live in the Collins Street area. He supported the given that, that gas station liquor license. He said it was good for the community. He disrespected another neighborhood organization which opposed it. And he has the gall to come up now and say, well, you shouldn't do that with the Dunkin' Donuts until you get input from the residents of the area. That's disgraceful and disgusting. We will not forget what has happened to the east side. We will not forget that. They had a, a, a near riot there the other night, which I saw with my own eyes. And the Joliet Police Department did an outstanding job in getting there quickly in a situation that people could have got hurt or killed. They've had other incidents at that golf gas station. So just imagine what's going to happen at Thornton's gas station when they're allowed to drink liquor on the premises. It's disgraceful. The situation over at Six Corner, there should be no problem in approving that instead of catering to a couple residents when you wouldn't listen to over 300 residents on the east side, Mrs. Coleman. You didn't listen to them. You could care less what they thought. You went ahead and gave your I vote. And over there at Dunkin' Donuts, there's a few people who might be opposed, but use common sense. You don't need a study. You had Burrito King at that corner. You had consumer liquor for over 20 years at that corner with no problems with traffic. I support that, and I'm appalled at the fact that some council people don't care about the Hispanic community, that, didn't, that don't care about what their concerns are or what are listening to their voices be heard. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <clears throat> Audrey, this is Mayor Odekirk. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Audrey Secco, Joliet, Illinois. I want to speak briefly on Resolution 336-20, the resolution denying a special use permit to allow a used car sales facility located at 1900 Essington Road. I strongly urge you to deny this used car lot there. It will do nothing to enhance the business district that is steadily building up on Essington Road. The residents of the Wexford subdivision did not choose to live there to have a junker car lot as the entrance to that subdivision. The daycare center directly behind that lot would become threatened by safety also. And you already have two car dealers within a half mile, Darcy and Chignoli, which I have no problem with either one of those businesses being located there. Keep Joliet moving on an uptake. Don't start approving substandard businesses just to fill an open space. The economic director didn't do a very good job developing Jefferson Street. Look what it is like now. Don't turn Essington Road into another Jefferson Street. And finally, as a, just as a side comment, you still need to fill the job of city manager. And by now, I'm sure you regret your bad decision to keep Jones. Well, I understand Marty is still available. Thank you. Thank you. That is the last caller for citizens to be heard. Next on the agenda is Mayor Pro Tem. Is there a motion to appoint Councilman Pat Mudrin to serve as Mayor Pro Tem for the term July 1st through September 30th, 2020? So moved. Second. In motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Yes. You can vote for yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Motion carried. Next is council committee reports. First will be finance committee report. The finance committee comprised of Councilwoman Reardon, Councilman Mudrin and myself met here at 530 in the council chambers to review the following items. We had a uh, report from the uh, from uh, Joe Johnson from Stantec uh, 
engineers about the uh, alternate water source program funding st st strategy update. And I'd ask Allison to come in and, and uh, give an update on that. Thank you, Councilman. So tonight we did present the Finance Committee with an update on the uh, uh, funding strategy that we've been working on. We have a team that meets internally each month to talk about uh, potential funding opportunities for the Alternative Water Source Program. Um, we have based the Phase two study on a traditional um, funding strategy that consisted of um, low interest loans from federal and state programs as well as utilizing uh, bonds. We did spend some tonight, time tonight discussing an alternative funding using public-private partnerships. Um, while this strategy isn't being recommended by the project team, we did want to um, make the committee um, aware that there are some um, alternative means of, of, of financing such a significant project. So we're going to continue to um, you know, look at those and work with the finance committee to um, further refine the funding strategy and then present that uh, later this year um, for a recommendation to the council. And we are going to be um, at having the workshop next Tuesday to um, discuss um, the, the program uh, in de more detail and in general. So um, that's the update on the funding strategy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is the authorization to an award a contract for comprehensive benefit consulting broker services, which is uh, services to ensure that we are getting the best uh, rates in the marketplace for our health insurance. Um, it's been Gallagher Benefit Services in the past. The uh, unions and city workers are uh, comfortable, with, comfortable with them. Uh, they're um, proposing a three-year contract. Uh, first year, 76000 which is uh, the same price as it's been in the past. And then, uh, then uh, some uh, additional three years uh, options. So that was approved by the Finance Committee. Um, Next, next is the discussion of the vehicle replacement fund, and uh, Jim Gadotti, if you could step in for that one. I can go on to the next item and come back to that sure. if you want. Um, the next is the uh, monthly financial reports. Um, Jim was telling us that our state sales tax is down 11 percent. Hotel motel, hotel motel tax is down 85 percent. Food and beverage tax is down 70 percent, and the income tax is down 14 percent. So um, he's monitoring all the uh, the uh, the funds at this point to. Uh, to see where we're, we're going and we'll have some information at uh, our next meeting. Um, also, we reviewed the temporary departmental vacancies, which is very low, there was only two. We reviewed the travel expense report and invoices paid report and uh, found them very little travel going on naturally. And the invoices <coughs> paid report were all routine, so uh, we recommend their approval. Mike had a question on the third number. The food and beverage is down 70 percent. Is that correct? That's what uh, Jim had told us. Okay, thank it you. It wasn't 17; it was 70. Correct? Yeah. yeah. And Mayor, Mike, I had one other question too. For what month or months? Uh, I I believe it's this last so month. April or May? Yeah, last time we only had up to March in. Yeah, this is this would be then April and May. This is a total combined as of right now, where we are compared to where we had been before last year. I, I think, I think yeah, this would probably, yeah, Jim, come on in. I think this is probably the first month that that would represent. Jim, is that the percentages we were down and mentioned about for, for uh, sales tax, hotel, motel, food and beverage, was that for the month of? Uh, March. 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 Yes. So the sales tax was down about 11% compared to March of last year. Um, was that for the whole month or did you prorate just the second two weeks when everything? It was for the whole month. So. You're right to point out that we were closed for only two weeks of that month. April's uh, tax, uh, sales tax money will come in uh, next month, July. So we'll have a better handle on how much is lower when you're closed the whole month. 
Um, I'm sure nobody's surprised our hotel and motel tax is down about 85%. Our food and beverage is down about 60% at this time for March. Um, I'll have April and uh, figures uh, pretty soon and we'll be making a presentation at the Finance Committee and the Council of a Whole in the second meeting in July when I will have some numbers from April and I will be able to estimate what the end of the year is going to be. Um, I, it's quite easy to figure out if uh, we get $50 million in sales tax and it's down 10 percent, we're going to lose $5 million. Uh, add that to what's going on with the casinos, of course, you know, the revenue from them was down 100 percent, zero. So um, I will make a report to the council of the whole where the city's at and try to make some estimates for the rest of the year. Uh, as you know, uh, we've been uh, meeting with departments and union groups uh, looking at where we can slow down our expenditures or cut our expenditures. Um, we have no control over our revenues. They, we just have to take what we can get. So um, virtually every line item is down. Uh, so. And then, Jim, do you want to talk about the vehicle replacement fund? Yes, I presented Ice to the Miller. sure. I presented to the uh, finance committee uh, where we're at with the um, uh, vehicle replacement fund. Uh, the city council has approved all but uh, two expenditures. One would be a, a skid steer loader, and then the police cars, uh, ten police cars. Uh, we're going to wait on on ordering those. Uh, we did get our revenues for the three cents in um, March, and that would be for February's collections. That was about 150,000. Uh, April's was 150,000, and then uh, May's was 123,000, uh, and that was for April's collections. So um, we're down, but. For the end, end of the year, I estimated uh, conservatively that we would bring in about $110,000 a month and uh, showed that um, with the purchases already approved for year one and the first payment of the debt that we would have enough uh, funds to uh, pay for our vehicle purchases. During the 2021 budget process, we'll look at year two of the vehicle uh, purchases. Um, the goal is not to borrow any more money, to use whatever we get in the gas tax and to balance our purchases uh, 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 in line with that. I did ask the um, uh, Finance Committee uh, recommendation to pick a bond council. Uh, we have used uh, Chapman and Cutler and Ice Miller in the past. Uh, we've gotten quotes from both of those. And even though um, it's a professional service and it's uh, uh, about uh, $9,500 was Ice Miller and 11000 was Chapman Cutler, I didn't feel comfortable picking them myself. So I'm asking for approval to hire Ice Miller as our bond counsel for the $4 million uh, debt that uh, we'll be looking at uh, floating in uh, probably July or August. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And uh, that, that concludes the report, Mayor. Is that going to be an agenda item coming up? For Ice Miller? Yes. Um, Jim, is that going to be at our next meeting, or do, can we just do it? it? It's, like I said, it doesn't have to be approved by council, but if council prefers it to be a, a voted on item, we have plenty of time that I could bring it to the council as a whole to vote on. Ice Miller for our bond council. Uh, I could bring it to the first meeting in July. Okay. That'd be no problem. That's fine. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Although land use and legislative is listed under reports, there are no reports this evening for that committee. Um, so next is public service committee report. Public service met here at City Hall in the council chambers <clears throat> yesterday at 4.30 in the afternoon in attendance or uh, committee members, uh, Councilwoman Gavin, Councilman Morris, and myself as well as uh, department heads Jim Trisna for Public Works and Allison Swisher for um, Public Utilities. 
was generally routine um, agenda. We had two contracts. One had to do with the sewer rehabilitation program, um, a professional services agreement with RJN Group. Of course, those monies are in the enterprise fund known as the Water and Sewer Fund, not coming out of the uh, any anemic general funds. The other one was a request for authorization of water contract for demolition of 100 to 106 Washington Street to Grossen, Grossening Incorporated for 97000 That would be the old Lions Lumber on Washington Street that we currently own. Um, again, the 97000 comes out of the SSA, which has will have, at the end of this property tax season, a little more than a million dollars in it. It does not come out of the general fund. Chain, we went through change order pay estimates and final payments, found everything to be in order. Um, we did uh, have discussion under ordinance and resolutions about the application for a drive through permit for a Dunkin' restaurant at 800 North Rainer Avenue, and we recommended to the council that we remove it and wait for a traffic study. I want to be clear with comments made earlier that Councilwoman Quillen had nothing to do with suggesting the traffic study. That was myself, with full support from Councilwoman Gavin and Councilman Morris. Um, while we've had businesses at that corner, at six corners in that lot over the last 40 or 50 years, we've never had a drive through business. That's why we asked for a, 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 um, a traffic study because of the impact or potential impact of drive through backups, stacking cars, especially um, in the early morning hours when people are going to work where they say a brunt of their business comes. We certainly weren't comfortable making a recommendation until we could figure out if the impact will be considerable or not. We have to you know, mitigate it if it is considerable. So there was the committee that suggested doing that, and it's based on the drive-through permit, not the fact that they want to sell donuts. Um, pretty much everything else on the agenda, as I said, was routine, was discussed, reviewed, and vetted. Everything met unanimous approval for a recommendation to the rest of the council here to approve it, and, and all but the, uh, the um, drive-through permit will not appear on tonight's it was pulled from tonight's agenda. The other item that you won't see was our 2020 membership dues to the Southwest Water Planning Group in the amount of 51402 We entered that group, which is the study of uh, deep well and, and, and groundwater wells that we still are, are dependent on until for at least another 10 years, roughly. And uh, we made a three-year commitment, and it's a wise commitment. So that was a committee-only vote to go ahead and pay the second year's dues. Um, for this group and the studies and, and the information it provides. That's incorporated in part into, into what we're doing with our alternative water supply. So, with that said, did I miss anything, Terry or Betty? No. No, sir, that was good. Okay. Good report. Then that would be our report for the Public Service Committee, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. You're welcome. Next is consent agenda. Council Memo 327-20, regular payroll for April 10th through April 23rd, 2020, $3,323,076.74. $3 Council Memo 328-20, regular payroll for April 24th through May 7th, 2020, $3,235,823.05. Council Memo 329-20, regular payroll for May 8th through May 21st, 2020, $3,337,705.58. It's recommended said regular payrolls be approved. Council Memo 330-20, the 2019 Annual Treasurer's Report. It's recommended this report be received and placed on file. Invoices paid report. It's recommended this report be received and placed on file. Is there a motion to approve said consent agenda items? Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Hugg? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. <clears throat> Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> Under licenses and permit applications, Council Memo 332-20 was previously removed from the agenda. 
Moving on under public hearings, Council Memo 334-20, a resolution committing local funds to the City of Joliet Westside Wastewater Treatment Plant Influent Lift Station Project. This is a public hearing, so comments would be in order at this time. It should be noted that no comments were submitted via email and no one registered to speak during the public hearing. So we still need to formally open the hearing. All right, the hearing is formally open. Krista, is there any comments? No comments for the public hearing. Any so, comment from the council? Yes, I'm shocked that we don't have groupies for the wastewater treatment plant showing up here. I thought we'd have somebody supporting it. I'm choking, okay. Uh, the public hearing is closed then. So let the record show the public hearing is now <coughs> closed. So it is recommended, um, Council Memo 334-20, a resolution committing local funds to the City of Joliet Westside Wastewater Treatment Plant Influent Lift Station Project be approved. So moved. Second. In motion and seconded to approve, Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Motion carried. Under resolutions, first is Council Memo 336-20, which was the resolution denying a special use permit to allow a used car sales facility located 1900 Essington Road. This was previously removed from the agenda. A oh. question there. Yes. Was there any indication if that was a permanent thing, Steve, or do we anticipate they'll be, or, or, or Kendall? Or are we anticipating that they come back? I'm sorry, Councilman, what was your question? Um, the removal of, of the agenda item for the used car lot. Yes. That, is that permanently be, being removed? Do they tell you, or, or do we? Yeah, it's permanently, permanently removed. The uh, petitioner is no longer going to purchase the property. Okay, thank you. Next is Council Memo 337-20, which is a resolution approving addendum number two to the intergovernmental agreement with the State of Illinois Department of Transportation for the Hobalt Road I-80 to U.S. Route 6 Roadway Improvement Project. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. So moved. Second. It's been motioned and seconded to approve. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 338-20 is a resolution authorizing a substantial amendment to the CDBG 2017-2018 annual action plans to the amended 2015-2019 consolidated plan. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. Mr. So, Mayor? Yes. Yeah, I, I have a question. I know we kind of talked about this yesterday, but uh, I uh, called Kendall today, and I guess I think it was, you brought up a point about the, it was supposed to be a new, this is for the uh, hosting. Yes. The, yeah, a new community center as opposed to them investing this money into the current. And I don't know if there was, there was any community input to that. It's like they, we were promised a new center and now getting a fixed up center. And well, I agree. There was a lot of community input initially into the plans. Right. And then I said it, it smelled of a backroom uh, decision. Right. Because that, I don't know if there was any community input on this. Yeah, I know. I hadn't heard of any. And, I, and that kind of... Uh, not bothered me, but just kind of question, you know, question the fact of, and, and I'm sure, you know, they would, they're going to do the right thing, you know, for, for the residents, but I don't know if the residents had any input or any knowledge of that they're not, this won't be a new center there, the, the whole community there, you know, not just the, the residents of Riverwalk. Right. So I was just wondering if, if uh, I don't know if, we, if, if I could ask for a table until we get more information from the developers on, you know, what the new, uh, I should say new, but what, what the community center is going to look like compared to what, if, if they if they had even any plans for the new one. So that's why my uh, 
concern with Carl and Kennedy that they were about. Sure. Yes, there was a um, public comment period. Uh, we didn't receive any comments. Um, uh, and directly to your question, I'm not sure if Holston had reached out to the to the residents for this um, specific project. Um, if it's the desire of the council, I think a tabling would be in order, and we can get those uh, questions clarified. Yeah, I, I just think that, that that would be the fair thing to do, you know. So I, I will move for a table until we could uh, talk Second. the whole thing and get some more information. Second. Would you like a specific date or do you want to remove it to bring it back at a different time? Whatever. Uh, let's, let's remove it. Okay. So the motion would be to remove Council Memo 338-20. Yes. Second. So it's in motion and seconded to remove Council Memo 338-20, which is a resolution authorizing a substantial amendment to the CDBG 2017-2018 Annual Action Plan to the amended 2015-2019 Consolidated Plan. Mayor and Council, thank you. Councilwoman thank you. Coleman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Motion carried. Councilman Mode 338 20 was removed. Next is Council Memo 339-20, which is a resolution appropriating motor fuel tax funds for the 2019 roadways resurfacing contract B in the amount of $36,174. It's recommended said resolution be adopted. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Coleman? Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 340 20, resolution authorizing the deferment and restructuring of Joliet Slammer's lease payments for 2020. Mayor? Yes. Uh, I think I call Steve Jones up. There seems to be not confusion, but maybe uh, this was misread or uh, confused in the way it came out on whether we were giving up the rent for games not played this year versus deferring the rent for games not played the next year, meaning that we would still hold the $75,000, but if they didn't play, and Steve and I had some conversation today. And go ahead. Um, yeah, just so there's no confusion, the word deferment in this particular uh, resolution agreement refers to the fact that the first half of 20 is deferred technically to September 30th of 2020. So instead of paying equal uh, $37,500 amounts, <coughs> it assumes that the whole amount will be paid on, on um, the end of the year. However, the annual number of games for the uh, for the slammers uh, equals 48 and if we look at that seventy five thousand dollars per year lease payment divided by the number of games it comes to one thousand five hundred sixty two dollars and fifty cents what this agreement says is if there are games taken off the, the roster or no games occur that for each of those games that's lost there's a one thousand five hundred sixty two dollar and fifty cent credit so in a scenario where there are no games in 2020, there's zero rent. Uh, in a case where half the games are there, then obviously you have uh, uh, the $37,500 amount. So deferral doesn't mean deferred payment from 2020 to 2021. It means defer the first half to the second half of the year, but still have this credit apply based upon the number of games lost. I don't think that was the way it was explained to us in the council. I had some calls from other council members asking me if this is the proposal that I wanted to bring out. And uh, I'm in error then because that was not what I had thought uh, our general conversation was about. But I don't know, Jane or Mike? No, I, I, I assume the other also. 
you know, what you were thinking. It's a tough one. So this would be needed to be, well, you tell me, is to be voted on or tabled to re, uh, um, reappear? Uh, I think the, the answer is somebody's question. Uh, we are set to receive our um, naming rights money in August as we did in the past. Uh, John Wilson had called me today to tell me that he had checked with uh, the, uh, the money people. So is this a Sabrina question or? I would suggest uh, in consideration with Councilman Mudrin that it be removed and that they rework it the way the committee wants it and then brought back. And that's acceptable. I would suggest that as well. Sorry, I spilled your thunder. That's okay. I'm used to it. Oh, okay. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> Is this a motion we need or do we have the motion? I'll make a motion. Motion to remove it and bring it back at such a time as the committee, the baseball committee, the stadium committee, uh, work, reworks it the way they see fit as a recommendation and bring to us. I can second that, but if, uh, I think we could, could have that done by the July meeting if there's room on the July uh, agenda for that. That's okay with you, Larry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's been motion and seconded to remove Council Memo 340 20 um, to continue discussions at the stadium committee level to bring back at a further time. Making a note that the second from Councilman Mudrin, he would really like to see some expediency to try to get it on the, the July meeting. Correct, Pat? Yes. Councilman Turk? Aye. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. Councilman Morris? Aye. Councilman Mudrin? Aye. Councilwoman Fullman? Aye. Councilwoman Reardon? Aye. Motion carried. Councilman Mel 340 20 was removed. Next on the agenda is Council Memo 341-20, Resolutions Associated with Hobolt Road Extension. <coughs> this includes a resolution approving a bridge and ground lease agreement between the City of Joliet and Hobolt Road Extension JV LLC, and a resolution authorizing the assignment of the City's Memorandum of Understanding with Center Point to Hobolt Road Extension JV LLC. I've invited uh, the attorney, Mike Hansen, representing Center Point on this. Mike, if you could address the council and then answer any questions. Yeah, yeah, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor, members of the City Council. We are requesting a tabling of this matter until I understand there's going to be a meeting next Tuesday, uh, one week from tonight at 6.30 p.m. We still have some things to work out. We will get those worked out and present the proper agreement and the exhibits to everyone timely. So uh, I just want to make sure that the motion includes uh, a tabling to next Tuesday, July, excuse me, June, June 23rd. And I don't know where Sabrina is. I want to make sure that there's a you know, properly called meeting for next Tuesday. Okay. Because I, I understand, I heard workshop earlier. And, oh, excuse me. So we have to publish that on the, on the agenda then for Tuesday? Yeah. Yes, originally we will call it a special meeting and then um, you will call it a special we meeting? Can call, okay. We have yeah. not sent out the agenda or the notice yet, so it can be called a special meeting. Um, the meeting starts at 5 p.m. Um, it is a, was a water workshop, my understanding. So that was scheduled from 5 to 7. I guess I would ask would we begin this discussion at 7 o'clock then. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Very good. Thank you. So we would that would require a... Um, a motion in a second and obviously to pass in order for that to happen. So. I would make a motion to table this item until June 23rd at 7 p.m. following during the meeting that uh, also will be having the um, the water conference or the, the right term workshop. There you go. <laughs> second. It's been motion and seconded to table council memo 341-20 resolutions associated with Hobolt Road Extension to the special meeting scheduled for June 23rd, 2020. The meeting does start at 5 p.m. However, this will uh, begin at 7 p.m. Councilman Dickinson? Aye. Councilwoman Gavin? Aye. Councilman Hug? Aye. 
Councilman Morris. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Motion carried. Council Memo 341-20 was uh, tabled to June 23rd. Thank you very much. See you next week, Mike. And uh, if Mike Murphy could be in attendance also, I think he should address the council. Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Moving on under award of contracts, Council Memo 343-20, award of contract for comprehensive benefit consulting broker services with Gallagher Benefit Services in the amount of $76,000. Council Memo 344-20, award a contract for the demolition of 10106 East Washington Street to Gross Henning Incorporated in the amount of $97,000. Council Memo 345-20, authorization to approve a professional services agreement for the 2021 Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation Program on behalf of RJN Group in the amount of $134,950. It's recommended Council Memos 343-20 through 345-20 be approved. So moved. Second. It's been motion and seconded to approve. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Motion carried. Under amendments, change orders and payments, Council Memo 346-20, approved change order number two for the East Side Wastewater Treatment Plant Phosphorus Removal Project to Williams Brothers Construction in the amount of Negative $1,648.79. Council Memo 347-20. Approved change order number one for the 2019-2020 snow removal for the commuter lot area to snow systems in the amount of $17,400. Council Memo 348-20. Approved payment of the 2020 membership dues for the Southwest Water Planning Group in the amount of $51,402. And Council Memo 349-20. Approved change order number one for the 2019 Roadways Resurfacing Contract B to Austin Tyler Construction in the amount of $36,174 and payment number three in the amount of $161,145.86. It's recommended council memos 346-20 through 349-20 be approved. Second. In motion and seconded to approve. Councilman Hug. Aye. Councilman Morris. Aye. Councilman Mudrin. Aye. Councilwoman Coleman. Aye. Councilwoman Reardon. Aye. Councilman Turk. Aye. Councilman Dickinson. Aye. Councilwoman Gavin. Aye. Motion carried. Next is the city manager's report. Oh, thank you. I have three items tonight. Um, first off, as everyone knows, as the COVID pandemic was sort of sweeping through Illinois and Will County, um, the city of Joliet, along with other municipalities and businesses, started to close down um, access to the facilities and scale back operations a little bit. Uh, as we did that, we notified the public that we were going to defer any payment of late fees during that time period. Obviously, if it was more difficult to get to City Hall, uh, pay cash, do whatever, um, it wasn't fair to impose that burden upon people who couldn't conduct business as they always had. Um, primarily, our late fees were water sewer bills, food and beverage taxes, hotel motel, along with motor fuel. Since we are now open and um, pretty much back to, to normal business operations, we are proposing to reimpose those late fees beginning July 1st. So, um, you know, with access being uh, normal, uh, there would be no reason why anyone could say because of the pandemic that access was denied or they're uh, subject to a stay at home order. So July 1st will be the date, and we'll advertise that on our website and all the various locations that uh, uh, people access. Mayor? Yes, comment on that. Yeah, um, the point of order on that when you're done. 
Okay. My comment is it may be back to normal for those that are secu- you know, guaranteed a job here at City Hall. We still have over 41 million Americans out of work. And we have to, you know, we're considering trying to help out the, 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 the slammers by deferring and delaying. So I think it might be premature to be saddling people with late fees. Certainly there might be some people out there that could abuse it, I guess, could afford to pay, have their full employment still decide to pay late. I don't know why they would do that, but, but there, we, we have quite a few. We don't have any accurate numbers of exactly what our unemployment here is in the city of Joliet, but I know it's high, and I'm sure we all can assume that. I think it might be premature to do that to the, to, to the people still struggling to get their jobs back and to bounce back from the debt they've been put in because of the COVID. Okay, point of order. Um, that was my decision to waive the late, late fees. There was a, a state of emergency in the first declaration. That was part of it. Um, so if they're going to be reinstated, it should come through me. We can discuss it offline, but that's not your decision to make. That would have to come through me. Oh, I, I wasn't aware of that. That yes. was a staff decision. So Okay, thank you. That's fine. Um, second item, um, as we have started to look at some of our uh, cost cutting and deficit reduction uh, possibilities, um, started making progress. Then we had two disasters, as everyone recalls. We had the tornado that wasn't a tornado, along with um, approximately a week of uh, protesting and a little bit of civil disobedience. I hate to say it, but we're probably talking about $300,000 of overtime from the wind damage and about a half a million dollars in overtime from the, uh, uh, the looting and the, uh, the civil disobedience. Um, the good news, if there is any that would come out of that, is that uh, Will County was declared one of the counties in Illinois that was uh, a disaster area as a result of the uh, um, civil disobedience. The Will County um, Emergency Management Agency is starting to collect data. Hopefully the state can put together numbers and perhaps there could be some federal assistance if, if this area gets declared uh, a disaster area. Potentially some of the overtime and some of the expenses that were, uh, were incurred during that process could be reimbursed. Um, maybe 50%, maybe less if it happens, but uh, certainly better than nothing. And then lastly, uh, Jim Gadotti alluded to it a little bit, but uh, we are continuing identifying some of the budget reduction opportunities. Um, we, we may have some targeted employees who perhaps are getting close to retirement, perhaps with a little bit of a nudge, uh, would be encouraged to leave before the end of the calendar year. We're going to be pursuing that option over the next couple of months, I'm sorry, a couple of weeks. And by early July, we'll have a full plan to the council once we see who, if anybody, is interested in taking an opportunity uh, to leave the city. Um, then we can recalculate our numbers and see exactly where we need to be. But as Jim alluded, and some of those revenue numbers are a little frightening, uh, and we still have the issue of when the casinos will open, um, his estimates have still stayed within that 12 to $20 million deficit range. Uh, and our fund balance is... I believe it's 33 million, I shouldn't say fund balance, cash balance, 33 million down from 40 at the beginning of the year. And as Finance Committee heard, we're about to hit those months where there was very little business activity because of the fact that revenues are received by the city several months after uh, uh, consumers buy or don't buy. So we'll keep everyone informed, but uh, we're working on it. That's in the report. Thank you. Next is public comments. Um, we did not receive any email comments. However, we have several that signed up to speak in public comments. I believe someone's on the call. Good evening, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? it is clear that you have led the most divisive administration in recent history. Over the past year, your actions have led to a council split that has put you, Mayor, in the minority. During your tenure of five years, there have been four separate city managers. Your recent actions of May 31st have now led to serious divisions within the overall community and placed serious doubt on your ability to provide any moral leadership to address problems in Joliet. After hearing your claim that the May 31st video did not tell the whole story, 
and your claims were that you were the victim, the public got to see another video of you brutalizing a prisoner and attacking another individual. Your lack of character is becoming painfully obvious, Mr. Mayor. To defend yourself, it was quite comical that you chose to surround yourself with the purported, purported African-American leaders who support you. Mr. Darden claimed to be the CEO of a black chamber organization. Turns out he was reported to have been terminated upon, from that position over a year ago. You also had the support of a former black police officer. Funny how you appointed him to a city position on the same day he appeared on your behalf. Was that a coincidence, Mayor? And there is the interesting case of Kathy Spieler. You know Kathy, Mayor. She calls in almost every meeting and offers gushy support of you, Mayor. Is it true that you pay her to run your campaign Facebook page? Do you also pay her to call in every meeting? I'm just curious. Here's the transparency that I've heard the council speak of. The community deserves better, Mr. Mayor. You are unable to provide the leadership to move Joliet past its current problems or even future. It is time to step aside. I would urge your immediate resignation. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you. Was there a name or address for the record? Um, Lori Ann is the name. Okay. The next caller should be on the. Mario is next. Mario, it's Mayor Odeker. Can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Yes, Mayor. My name is Mario Valentini. I'm with MRV Architects. Uh, we're actually the architects for the uh, item that was uh, on the agenda previously, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts um, the drive through uh, consideration for the drive through permit. And um, I actually uh, made that submittal uh, thinking that I could get on yesterday during the preliminary discussions, but I guess uh, even tonight would be fine. But uh, I, I just wanted to give a quick uh, kind of um, some feedback on where we've been uh, the past uh, couple days and, uh, and, and, and appreciate the uh, council's uh, kind of understanding of where we're at now. Um, uh, and if I could very briefly, the project went through uh, a, a nice long extensive review with staff uh, we feel comfortable that the, the site plan that we generated um, can uh, support the operations that we're proposing on the site well we understand the need uh, to make sure that there are uh, no traffic safety uh, violations um, it, we'll, we'll, we'll talk through and work through uh, with a traffic uh, engineer, maybe uh, a traffic analysis, difficult to do traffic studies right now, uh, that being that the, the, the traffic isn't necessarily where it would normally have been maybe last year, two years, or three years ago. But, but that being said, I think we can kind of work through those things. But uh, I just wanted to um, uh, kind of just introduce myself, say thank you for uh, uh, the opportunity to, um, to bring this to your attention and um, to the, the councilwoman um, that had asked uh, for us to maybe reach out to the community uh, and look at neighboring uh, properties and property and, and business owners. Uh, we've actually done that. We, when we first looked at this project, uh, we we actually weren't aware of the fact that you know that was going to be a requirement. Um, we were uh, working with um, uh, Jim. I'm uh, sorry, Russ Lubash and we were working with uh, Jim Torrey uh, in, in, in planning, and uh, the understanding was um, they, they had, a, you know, obviously staff has full support of this, and, um, and, you know, we felt that basically that's, you know, where we needed to be at. If, if, if there was going to be a concern, we could have addressed it um, months ago, and, and, and so that being said, we are doing that. Um, uh, in fact, the owner of the proposed Dunkin' Donuts has spoken to, um, I forgot what the, name, the gentleman's name is, but he's the, uh, the deli owner uh, adjacent. And, and I think that was one of the concerns, you know, was there gonna be some uh, some issues with that? And, and actually we've, we've received some support uh, from that owner. Uh, and then we've actually uh, gone um, and put a petition together um, and we're going to have that petition walked house to house uh, in the surrounding area uh, just to be able to have people be aware of the project, I think it's easier if we can 
uh, talk to people and, and have it be done on a face-to-face -face as opposed to just sending them some blind uh, mailing uh, information. So I think that will help because we can sit down, not sit down, but uh, have face-to-face -face explanation of what we're actually doing. Um, that being said, uh, when we were putting that site plan together and basically the whole development together, we made special consideration to not ask for any variations. There's no variations to building setbacks, no variations to landscape setbacks, uh, no variation to uh, parking requirements. Um, we meet the, uh, the city's required uh, drive-through stack. Uh, so again, we really feel comfortable that all the time we spent working with staff uh, going through reiteration and reiteration, really honed in on a project that we know um, can 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 really be a, a, a contribution to the to the area and not a detriment to the area. Um, so again, I, I appreciate the, the time uh, and the ability to speak. Uh, we'll we'll continue to work with staff um, and, and try to work out some of the traffic issues. Uh, if I could, if anybody has any questions regarding the project, uh, you know, I'd like to be able to uh, to address those very quickly. But again, uh, we're we're we understand what. Is, is asked of us and we're um, proceeding accordingly to uh, to help that. Thank you. You know, moving forward, Steve, or Krista, this is not public comment. You should have been um, on the agenda. I don't see why we can't have these people start to come in. City Hall's open, so they could they don't have to sit in the council meeting, but they could come and address the council when the, when the item's up. It's, it's interesting, Mayor. I think the next regular meeting in July will probably be in that phase four for the governor, which I believe is at 50. Right. So in effect, I think our business here goes pretty close back to normal. Okay. I, I did have a question for him. Sure. Is he, is he still online? <coughs> yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had a question. Do, do you know, um, you know, you had talked about looking at the parking, which is good. Do you know what the second business is going to be um, even preliminarily and how that would impact the parking on that parcel yeah I, I can uh, I can what we've been in discussions with oh not me but what the uh, owner has been in discussions with is um, potentially a barber shop or somebody um, um, a hairstylist or something like that so we, we know and we understand what that building is and what zoning that building falls under, right? And we can't deviate from that. So if, if that zoning only allows, and that number of parking spaces only allows the Dunkin' Donuts plus a business like say a insurance company or a small office, then, then that's what we would have, right? As soon as we try to uh, introduce something different that wouldn't be allowed just from the from the sheer fact that we wouldn't meet the parking requirements. So we feel comfortable knowing that he's been reaching out to um, a hairstylist uh, and, and maybe Barbara. I don't I don't remember uh, exactly, but it's a low impact use. Nothing that would uh, generate uh, any significant amount of additional need for parking. And then, quite frankly. We just can't do it anyway because, again, when working with staff, they, they, they filter through that stuff very well. And they, they, they come back to us and they, well, we adjust our, our, our allowable square footage, right? We adjust that to say, okay, we can't build a much bigger building because we don't have the parking to support it. And that's why I was mentioning we didn't seek any variances, like, say, parking variances. Our building can only support the Dunkin' Donuts and a business use. It can't support another Dunkin' Donuts, and you know, and something else that uh, that 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 would require um, additional parking beyond what the capacity is of that parking lot. All right, thank, thank you. you. I think we're going to move on. Thank you. Okay, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy's on the line. Okay. Kathy, this is Mayor Oderkirk. You give your name, address, and comment, please. Yes, it's Kathy Spieler, Joliet, Illinois, and um, I actually have a few things to say, but before I do that, I would like to um, say something, as I'm a little popular tonight from the last caller here. As most of you know, my mother spent 60 years donating her time to this city. I have, in comparison, has been nothing, has only been six. 
part of my devotion to the city and the community is helping to run a facebook page it's not a campaign page it's questions and helping joliet residents figure out things like potholes and how many dogs you can have in a house and and just simple things like that i have never earned a penny doing any of my community involvement so i just wanted to put that on the record and next up, I'd like to uh, speak as a board member of the Reedwood Neighborhood Association. Our group has been reporting a large amount of noise disturbances from fireworks. Many of our Reedwood members have called about this, and from what I understand, we have a city ordinance that bans people from shooting off fireworks. I even think it's illegal in the state of Illinois. We're asking that something could be done about this to enforce this Joliet ordinance. Um, aside from our neighborhood, speaking of just a Joliet resident, I know that we've been getting complaints at least from six different areas of the city saying that it's upsetting pets, veterans with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, people who have to work in the morning are being uh, disturbed at 11 and 12 o'clock at night. Another lady said it woke up her baby and now she's got a crying baby in the middle of the night. So I understand it's summer and people want to have fun, but let's keep the fireworks to the 3rd and 4th of July. Also, is there a way that whoever takes in these calls to let the callers know that you must comment in public comment section unless it's an agenda item? I think it might be good to let people know, just as a generalization, when you call into council, you are able to speak and give opinions, but that the council and mayor do not answer questions during public comment. I'm not sure why there's a lot of confusion on this, but I'm gonna suggest that this is put on the city website in big, bold letters. Um, you know, when I started volunteering, I didn't know either. So it's probably just somebody doesn't know, so let's help them along so everything goes smoothly. I agree with Audrey on um, the car dealership on Essington. I think the changes in businesses happened to Jefferson Street, and I really hate it to see it happened at Essington Road as well. Um, if things call, maybe we can rebuild Jefferson Street too. Also agreeing with Audrey to bring back Marty Shanahan. And when Mr. Jones said a little bit of civil disobedience, did he mean the rioting, looting, theft, and shootings, frozen bottles being thrown at police? I just wanted that clarified. If somebody could get back to me another time. Mayor, you're doing a great job. Please continue your work for the Joliet residents. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Mary Beth is on the line. Ma'am, can you give your name, address, and comment, please? Good evening, Mary Beth Gannon, Western Avenue, Joliet. I uh, hope everyone is well tonight. Now is the time to beef up our standards for hiring our next city manager. We really need someone with at least one year experience. When you bend the rules, as five of you did with Steve Jones, you get a subpar employee who violates the residency rule or someone who would potentially violate one of the other qualifications. Let's get the standards right and make sure the right person is hired. Like Kathy and Audrey said, it should be Marty Shanahan. But making the right decision often requires the kind of fortitude that sadly most people lack. Tonight during agenda items, you allowed a caller to swear and be extremely rude to Councilwoman Coleman. Why wasn't this man disconnected? I thought swearing wasn't allowed. As irritated as I get with some of you when I call, and probably you with me, I certainly never swear at any of you. It has no place in a public meeting, and it immediately negates any point that that person tries to make. For what it's worth, everyone I know, and I know a lot of people, think Jan does an outstanding job, and I'm proud to call her my neighbor. She raised excellent points tonight and concerns about the potential Dunkin' Donuts at Six Corners. People I know who live over there, including some family, have concerns, and I think it's a good idea that the council plans to listen to them. I am going to call out again Betty Gavin and Don Dickinson, who are still taking insurance stipends from the city even though both of them already have separate insurance outside of city council. This is thousands of dollars that our city needs and the two of you are taking. While it's not illegal, it is anything but ethical. People are paying attention, lots of us. 
especially with the election coming up next year. Lastly, I would like to thank Mayor Odekirk for his strong leadership, for listening to all residents, for taking in everyone's input and looking for solutions to make Joliet the best it can be, a city of champions. I'd like to remind him that thousands of us residents stand by him. He is the best mayor in my lifetime. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nancy is the last caller. Ma'am, can you give your name, address, and uh, comment, please? My name is Nancy Kim. I live in the 100 block of the, in the Reedwood neighborhood. I'm one other black colonial. I will first address a question to Steve Jones. Will a fireworks task force be re-initiated to reduce the fireworks in our neighborhood and others? I believe several years ago there was such a thing and it was successful. We have not even gotten the 4th of July yet and this has started at the beginning of May. Now to the entire city council, the fireworks in the Reedswood area have seemed to start earlier this year. We have been in our house for 21 years, and this has been the worst so far regarding fireworks. It has not been just a weekend issue, but a daily and nightly issue. We are also not dealing with your typical fireworks either. We are talking shake the windows explosions coming from a block or two away. I have called the police two or three times this year already. I have told them that I will sign a complaint and no results on finding the culprit. I told the officer last night that I will sign a complaint for animal cruelty also. We have a dog, Rizzo, that has scratched and bruised my legs trying to get up into my lap after fireworks and explosions. Rizzo refuses to go outside for the bathroom and I must clean up the mess constantly. But I do not blame him. I blame the ignorant people with fireworks. I am aggravated that I must put on a thunder shirt and drug our dog. Hopefully in time that he will be slightly calmer, nightly, because of some of the inconsiderate people. According to the 510 Illinois compiled statute 73.01, 3.01 reads cruel treatment. So paragraph A, no person or owner may be cruelly treat, torment, starve, overwork, or otherwise abuse any animal. Rizzo and other animals in the area are not only being cruelly treated, but tormented every single time someone uses fireworks. What about someone with PTSD? I cannot even imagine how they must feel because my own nerves rattle with the explosion. Was that four minutes? No. Call her back. Okay. Was it the okay. alarm that went off? Call her back. Mayor, she's got a minute and 50 left. Okay. They're going to call her back, and that would be my fault. I had a different alarm that went off my phone. We need a new time. I guess so. <laughs> I've, I've outlived my usefulness. <laughs> Pat, that's your new job, too. Okay. You're, <laughs> you're free now. Problem. You're not yeah. pro-tem anymore. You say the prayer, Mayor Pro-tem, and now time you. Yeah. You should go with Mayor Pro-tem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my last. <laughs> I, I will say this, my drive record is pretty good. I've probably timed over a thousand people by now. Yeah. We only remember the one you missed. Right? That's it. <laughs> you remember it's that one shot you missed, right? <laughs> Poor Nancy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, she's on the line. Nancy, uh, my apologies, it's Mayor Odekirk. You were uh, cut off when you were making a comment about PTSD, if you could continue. Okay, um, what about someone with PTSD? I cannot even imagine how they must feel because my own nerves rattle with the explosions. All that being said, can we please give an ordinance for animal cruelty with a hefty fine and enforce the loud noise ordinance? When I got cut off, somebody was shooting off fireworks, darn it. Um, but thank you for your time. Be safe and be well. Thank you.
That concludes our public comments this evening. Next is new business, not for final action or recommendation. Oh, Jim. Yes, I have something uh, now and call Jim Trisna. Are you still here, Jim? Hi, Jim. Yeah, we had talked about this yesterday before the meeting. Um, it's new business for uh, this area over at Six Corners at Jefferson and Rayner. There's a constituent that called. And I've been, received several other calls because there's been so many car accidents there. Several, I can't count them right now, but uh, it seems like it's at least once a month. So uh, this constituent was going to come to the public safety meeting last week, but it was canceled. So. I brought it up, he didn't want to call in, but I, th I told him that I would bring it up here tonight. So I would give you his phone number okay. so that you could work something out. There's something about a sign that was up further down the road and it's now missing. And um, I don't know if the timing of the light is off or not, but he asked me to bring his request to you. And so I so could, okay. couldn't be at public safety. Sure, if you just want to email that to me, Jan, that'd be fine. No, I, I certainly will, I certainly okay. will. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Is that it? Mm -hmm. I got a question for Jim. I'm sorry, Mayor. It's something that you're going to be interested in, too. I want to make sure that uh, the, the Mirage thing that we just talked about yesterday, are uh, we moving forward and who's going to organize the meeting? Do you know who's going to organize um, the meeting? I know Scott reached out to that Chris Pride, Chris Pride. who's the Mirage HOA. Then I saw an email um, this afternoon from uh, Nemanish <laughs> Consultants, who I think they handle the what do they call it the Mirage Condos? It's a separate. It's right, not. It's, 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 firm. Yeah, to the, the that's the condos to the north of Desert. Right. They asked to. Um, I think Scott and I to come out there next Wednesday. I'm going to talk to Scott tomorrow. I, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm open, and uh, so Scott and I can go out there that, uh, next Wednesday to meet with with Tanya in the morning. And I, I know Scott reached out to the again that Chris Pride. I don't think he I don't think he okay. heard back from. So him we're yet. still heading towards having a, a meeting. Yes, it's yes. It's going to be scheduled for Chris, which would include you, legal. The mayor might want to come myself. Whoever. Okay. We, well, I can let you and the mayor know. Like you said, okay. if you want to, if you're not, if not, just you know, staff go. That's fine too. Okay. No, I'm sure we'd want to go. Yeah. For the, okay. All right. But are, are, you, are you are you guys are did you want to be part of the nine o'clock next Wednesday meeting? I don't know if you're available. I, I'll check my, my yeah, email. I'll forward you the email later, and then you guys let me. But if not, like I said, Scott and I, I'm sure, I, I'm almost sure I'm available, and Scott and I can go out there. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. And thank work you, on Mike. the other one then also. <coughs> Mike. Nothing. Sherry. No. Pat. No. Nope. Betty, you have any uh, new business? Uh, yeah, uh, just for Jim, and I will email him. I got a little flooding issue too, and the. Uh, Damon uh, Hague Street area right in there, but I'll email Jim about that. Okay. Um, I have a couple items. Um, I'll get to the ad hoc city manager search committee. And I mean, I did want to address one thing. Um, the la this last week, there have been a number of false reports um, in a local newspaper about my personnel file. Um, Ms. Bannell, I know you're, uh, you're not with HR, you are a corporation counsel. Maybe you can address this regarding, I guess, the status of my uh, my personnel file with the city. So a FOIA request did come in requesting your personnel file. That request was responded to by the HR director, the HR department. Um, she did consult with the legal department. Your, there are records that are uh, disciplinary based that are in your HR file that were withheld pursuant to the exemptions uh, within the FOIA statute. So they I do exist. However, they were withheld uh, because they are in excess of four years old. Okay, and had the file been purged or removed as was reported in the local paper? As, as far as I know, no. I mean, okay. your, your file is intact. Uh, whatever was in there remains in there. So we, we know of one employee, maybe two, that have made defamatory comments about me, which are false to local newspapers. Is that being pursued by you or the city manager? There has been some discussion and some internal dialogue between okay. the city manager and I. Well, thank you for clearing that up. It's, it's been fake news. Um, I normally don't respond to uh, things that are wrong in the paper because <laughs> I spent all day long doing that. But this one I did want to address because it's not true, and I'm not sure why it was put out, uh, especially why it was put up by um, city employee, one or two city employees who took it upon themselves to spread lies about me. 
Um, number two, the ad hoc city management committee. Um, we haven't met since the last council meeting, but we have met as a council in executive session twice to talk about the process. I'll be frank, after last night's meeting, I'm not sure where we left it. There were different ideas. Um, I'll express what I said privately, I'll say it publicly. It's been a year now, or about a year, since five council members uh, removed the interim city manager, Marty Shanahan, and replaced him with a different interim city manager. As was stated earlier, Mr. Jones is not in compliance with the ordinance. Um, he doesn't live in the city of Joliet. Uh, furthermore, Mr. Jones retired earlier this year, so changed the whole relationship that he had, or he has with the city. Um, you know, I, there's five council members that have stood together throughout this process when, when it comes to this issue. And I, I'm, I don't know if frustrated is the right word, but I'm urging the five of you to move forward and make a decision and hire a new city manager. There's nothing holding this up other than the five people who removed Marty Shanahan. I said that privately last night. I know there's other opinions. If anyone wants to respond to that or, or chime in, feel free to have the conversation right now. I'll talk on that. Um, there was a proposal from Kathy Franzen slash HR for a uh, search company that she had identified after looking at a number of them and as I understood it, I'd like to talk to her again or have her come to the next meeting, that she felt that they could bring more candidates than were brought from our internal search. And I'd like to ask her again on why she thinks that and if that is the case, I'd like to vote uh, publicly here on that to say start the process. When, um, Mike, do we have to reconvene our committee to get this information from Kathy, or should she provide it to the council and we put it as an agenda item? I would think she could, you know, give it to the, to uh, put it down as an agenda item, I, I would think. I mean, Sabrina? I actually texted her. You, she you have to go to my oh, is she here? So I did text Kathy to come up. Um, I did discuss it with her yesterday evening and told her to have that information uh, available if, if the council wanted that today. Okay. So okay. she should be up, coming up shortly. Mm -hmm. As long as we're bringing this up, Mayor, um, I did do some research about an interim city manager job description, and we don't have one. Haven't had one. And the only thing I could come up with was the 1955 city ordinance for city manager. But in here, it does not mention an interim. Now, having said that, I asked for the uh, position of deputy city manager, because we did supposedly, we had one at one time. Mr. Jones was the deputy city manager when Mr. Hales was here and Mr. Hawk. Correct. And uh, this was established back in, I believe, 2012 the updated version, and because we didn't have a job description back then either. This is since 2012, and I do have copies if you want to look at this. So I think what we need to do is, um, since Mr. Jones is operating technically under the auspices of city manager, that puts a whole different light on things right now. There's really no interim job description. Uh, yeah, he's been the interim for over a year with no end in sight, so I don't know Understood. why that's called So uh, I don't either, but he's not the city manager, but so we really need to look at that at legislative too, because I asked the city clerk to look at this. And the other thing um, which I brought up too is in the deputy city manager job description, it says person has department head status, group one. So Kathy, with all due respect, since the department head and our current city ordinance for city manager says it has to be a department head, I'm, I'm curious as to why there were a few um, applicants that we did not look at because you didn't feel they were qualified because they were deputy city managers. So. Could you please clarify that? Well, we followed the um, we followed the request of the ad hoc committee for the requirements for that position, which were that they had at least six months of city manager experience, and deputy city manager was not included in that requirement. 
No, but the city manager position, it says, um, oh, I could go on and on. It's minimum eight years, progressive response, municipal government administrative management experience, preferably at the department head level or higher, or deputy city manager experience in a city of comparable population complexity as the city of Joliet. Now, that's what's going to be on the new, the new one. Okay. But the old one said a department had pretty much said the same thing, a department head. And so according to our job description from 2012, it says department head status is a deputy city manager. So that's where the confusion is. Yeah. First thing was that job description that I provided today was not signed. So I, I gave that cautiously because when I found it, it's an existing. I don't know if it was previously approved. That was the first thing. Um, okay, well, I did not know that because a lot of times we get copies and they're not signed right away. Yeah. Um, and then the search for the city manager, again, I believe, you know, the, the deputy city manager statement was precluded by the city manager requirement of at least six months. So I did go back and look at the applications that we had received though mm -hmm. and I didn't really see anything that would show that someone that had applied with deputy city manager would have been so we didn't miss anything then no we didn't miss okay anything. that was a concern yeah. of mine all right I know it was. thank you so we need to get these figured out you shot your ass. <laughs> what? what what councilwoman you have a comment Oh, no. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, a question for the council. Yeah. Yes. In your research, did you find anything? Nobody seems to be able to provide it to me. I'm thinking maybe you stumble. Where in our ordinances or in state law does it allow for us to abdicate our responsibility for voting on a city manager to a, did you find that, to a private company? You know, no. we've never voted on Steve Jones, and that's a fact. No. No. We voted on a con okay. There's no so such thing as a contract. In, it's no. not allowed in the ordinance as you saw. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So what's what's the plan? What are we doing? Kathy, uh, the group that you brought to us uh, last time, that their name again, please? Slavin and Associates. Do you know if they're still available and if the rate they quoted you was, is still um, current? And do you still have the confidence, I'm assuming this, that you seem to present to us last time in your research that this would be the, uh, a recommendation to the council to go with? Um, I was not able to confirm their rate today. Uh, I did leave a message, um, but I would still have confidence in that provider uh, to, to do the outreach, yes. So with this not on the agenda, is this something we can vote on since we're in open session to give a dollar parameter similar to what it was before? You, you know what it is before, correct? I don't know and if we need to vote. We can give instructions to, to have her move forward and bring a contract back to us. That was that. And is that, I guess, is that the will of the council do, to do a whole other search? Yes, to me. Mine. Three. Yes. Four. I just have one concern. For those that had voted for the, the two finalists in the previous search and then didn't pull the trigger, uh, you know, and we're going to be asked this by the fellow citizens, are we sure we're not going to go through this process, get down to two, and still not be able to pull the trigger? Uh, I guess I'm asking a rhetorical question. I don't know that we can get guarantees. You know, hopefully we can find somebody that all nine members of the council like, but you know, in democracy sometimes you don't get all nine. You get a majority. We had a majority last time, and they didn't pull the trigger. If it winds up being similar, where there's only four, five, six votes, or five, six, seven votes, are they going to pull the trigger? Because I don't want to continue to waste money, most importantly, and time on one search after the other, one year into the next. There's four yeses for a new search. Is there a fifth? Who's the four yeses? Uh, Mike, Sherry, Pat, and Don Dickinson. Uh, Betty, are you going for yes, a new search? Uh, a new search is what I'd like. Of course. Okay. Well, there you go. There's your five. Let's try this all over again. You bring back prices for us. Does it matter? 
is the price going to make a difference to you guys? Their if price. It, if it's in line. With their, their previous, with, their previous the uh, submission was twenty six five. Okay. Can, you, can we have this on the agenda for next Tuesday then? Is, is that enough time for you to prepare what you need? Absolutely. Okay. I think that's all then. Thank you. Just want to be clear because I was out of the room. So you would prefer that be added to the special meeting agenda? Right. Well, that's my preference. I'm, I'm speaking for everyone else. Do we want to move this along? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Let me just make note of that. So that's going to be a four-hour meeting then? I don't think this will take that long. Oh. There's going to be five yes votes right now. It's five to seven for the um, water. Yeah. Right. So it could be three, I don't know. And we have that other issue to talk about. That's what I'm saying. That's going to be an awfully long meeting. That shouldn't take long either. Okay. The contract or the MOU? Yeah. Yeah. So if new business is finished, then next is Mayor and Council comments. Stop this way. Betty? I have nothing. Terry? Nothing. Matt? Nope. Sure. No. Yeah. Happy Father's Day to everyone. You. Give Thank your dad you. a big hug and hu and kiss him, and to all my colleagues as well. Thank you. Happy Father's Day. Uh, condolences to the Roger McDaniel family. I would agree with that. Some of my comments. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Is there a motion second to adjourn? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.